All right, good afternoon. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are downloading and using Nessus today. Now, Nessus is a paid version of Vulnerability Scanner as to OpenVos, which was a open source uh, free version. Now, Nessus does offer a uh, limited usability for their, their vulnerability scanner, which we can use in our lab environment. Uh, and one of my students had asked me, hey, can you do a video on Nessus? Or I should say one of my old students, who has now graduated, he works for a major company now, uh, asked if I could do a video on Nessus. So I figured I'd indulge him one last time based on all of his questions that he had for me when we were in uh, the classroom environment again. So without further ado, let's jump into this. We need to install this. I am going to publish this link on the video down below so that you'll have access to it. Uh, but what we need to do is I'm in my Linux box. If you can see this right here, da -da -da -da, there I am. I'm in my Linux box and we are going to download our Nessus first. Let me get rid of some of these windows. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna download the most current version to our Linux. It says that Ubuntu right off the get go. So we're at Nessus 10.5.2. It's on a Linux Ubuntu AMD 64, but we need to move that because Kali is on a Debian system with 64 bit right here, AMD 64, Linux, Debian, AMD 64. That's what we're gonna use. We'll hit that download button, the agree button, and it's going to go to town. Shouldn't take that long. Um, it's already completed. All right, we're going to open up our uh, terminal. So uh, let me blow this up a little bit for you. You can see the nmap from last week. I haven't even bothered to shut down the machine yet, uh, which is, it is what it is, right? So let's do a CD for change directory downloads to get in that, uh, that directory. We'll hit LS to do a list. And here you go. You can see our Nessus 10 point. Uh, five put two right there. So we need to do a sudo dk dpkg switch i nessus and then hit tab to get the rest of it. Let's hit enter. It's going to ask for my password and it's going to go to town and start unloading and unpacking this uh, scanner for us. Again, shouldn't take that long. Already done. Now to start the nessus, we're going to grab all this right here. We'll copy that, we'll throw it into our command line and then paste it, hit enter, and it will ask me for my password again. Now it should be starting. Now all we have to do is open up HTTPS Kali. I am going to open the link. This will open up a new web page. We're gonna do that advanced and then accept the risks and continue. So we're gonna register for a Nessus Essentials account. Let's hit continue. I'm going to just type in that username, first and last name. And then once you've entered all of your email address, you've registered your account, and you've gone through the entire rigmarole, uh, it'll start doing its update. Now this could take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how many cores you have established with it. Uh, but we're going to let it go its thing, and then we'll jump back into it. All right, so once your system starts to look like this, you'll notice that this little skinning thing up here is spinning around. Uh, if you hover over it, it'll tell you it's compiling the plugins. Mine's at 38%. Uh, we really don't want to do anything until it's done downloading all the uh, updates and all the, the upgrades that are assisted with it, as well as those plugins. So just kind of go get some lunch. It's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, figure another 15, 20 minutes for this. All right, here we are. It's done updating. And all we have to do now is set up a new folder and new scans. You can see under my scans over here on the left hand side and all scans, we're going to create a new folder. I'm going to call that home network right there. I'm going to create and then right off the bat, I can hit new scan. I want to click on my own home network. I can hit new scan and it'll ask me, hey, what do you want to do over here? Well, the very first scan I'm going to do is host discovery. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. I'm just going to call it network scan and then targets 10.0.2.0 forward slash 24. That'll get my entire network. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And it's going to start a uh, scan place for me if I go over to home network again. And then I can launch the scan or I can trash it. I'm going to create another scan. This one's going to be against um, Keoptrix 1, which we've done Keoptrix 1 and before. And I'm going to do a basic network scan, which is going to tell me basically what's, what's on it. And I'm just going to call this Keoptrix 1 basic. And the IP address of that is 10.0.2.13 on my network. I'm going to save that. It's going to go in there as well. And then I'm going to create one more. And this one, because Keoptrix 1 is a web server, 
I'm just going to do a web application test over here. So you can go through and you can read. Let me go. Let me go back to this a little bit. You can go back through and read through these different scans. You'll notice some of them are upgraded. A lot of the compliance scans you have to upgrade for. But uh, for basic scanning for what we're doing today, I'm just going to do a web application test. And again, I'm going to call this Keoptrix One Web App, or eh, we'll just call it Web App WA web application scan. And again, I need to put that target 10.0.2.13 and I'm going to save it. And now if I go into home network, I've got all these different scans. So I'm going to launch all three of them and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right. Uh, and we'll be back after it's done completing its scan, which should take, I don't know, the basic network scan will probably take about five minutes. The basic Keoptra scan will probably take 10. And then the web application scan, I'm, I'm assuming 10 to 15. So now it's doing it all at once. So I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna come back in about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, our scans finished up and they went back in reverse order based on when we started them. So our network scan comes in, we click on that. We could see all the IP addresses attributed to our current network. And you'll notice that this pretty much mirrors Nmap in every way, shape, and form. It even provides us some open ports that are available to us based on the IP addresses that are available in our network. Uh, we can hit this back button right here. It'll take us back over to Keoptrix. I want to do the basic one first. Uh, let's jump into that one. You'll notice this basic network scan. It shows up with 14 critical vulnerabilities, 22 high, 38 medium, so on and so forth. If I click on each one of them, or excuse me, if I click on the bar, ooh, hiccups. If I click on the bar, it gives me the CVSS score, and then I can do it by severity, where your critical is the highest, so on and so forth. And just like before, when we saw in OpenVOS, we can see that Keoptrix 1 has some SSL issues, uh, and it tells us how to fix it, just like um, just like our normal OpenVOS one. Now, this is an older machine well documented so I don't expect to see a lot of differences between Nessus and and OpenVOS in this iteration of the scan however maybe with something like Windows 2019 running a higher end um, uh, updates uh, you'll probably get more out of Nessus than you will out of OpenVOS not every single time uh, but usually paid services provide us a little bit more detail in this particular case using a machine like Keoptrix One which is well into the if I remember correctly based on 2000 software and hardware, we're probably not going to see a lot that doesn't mirror each other, right? Um, so let's go to our other scan. we we'll back out of that. And our web application scan. And we'll notice that we have 10 critical, 11 high, 21 medium. And if I click on that, and I do it by CVS score, or excuse me, off severity, we can see that we have 15, or excuse me, 25 issues with OpenSSL. And if I go into there, it goes into more detail with each one of them. Now, this is specific to web servers because we're doing a web application test um, based on this. And a lot of open SSL issues uh, going into play. So this is Nessus in a nutshell. You can run this pretty much against any uh, machine. Um, students usually ask me, which one do I like more? Well, I like Nessus better, uh, of course. It's a paid service, right? It has a better, fancier GUI, uh, a little bit more detailed, all this other good stuff. But if I'm doing my own network, I would actually use both scans, right? I'd, I'd want to use both. I like to uh, have different measurements. Um, a while back ago, I was uh, I was with a CTF or doing a CTF. I was on faculty, on staff for a CTF. And we had more than enough uh, professors there and staff that I really wasn't needed. And we had a student that showed up a little bit late, and he wanted to do the CTF, but we didn't have a partner for him. So I partnered with him, and we did the... Uh, the hacking competition of portion of the CTF. Um, and uh, if, if you haven't ever had an opportunity to participate in a CTF and a capture the flag event uh, for cybersecurity, I 100% recommend it. It's a great opportunity to kind of go through it. Um, a lot of students, they, they kind of shy back from it thinking that, oh, I have to be this computer hacker extraordinaire or I have to know this. That's not what these CTFs are really designed for. Um, a lot of them, even the, the competitions, are designed for anybody to enter, right? Are you going to get as many points as a high-end person? No, but it's still a great learning environment. But anyway, I went off on my tangent. Anyway, we went through and we were doing this hacking exercise, and I had updated my laptop with the newest and greatest software and all the other good stuff that comes along with it. Uh, and I was running a Nmap scan against this IP address that was our hacking target. 
and it kept on coming back as a uh, VoIP phone and a VoIP phone and a VoIP phone. And I just couldn't figure it out because I knew it wasn't a VoIP phone. I knew that they were not providing it. So I was trying to figure out what was going on with my system. Anyway, the student I was with, uh, we used his machine and he did in-map scan against it, but he hadn't updated his in-map for like two or three weeks. And we found out that with the newest scan and in-map, it gave me a VoIP phone where his gave in to an actual Apache server based on a Linux system, so on and so forth. Um, well, I guess what my, my roundabout way of saying it is, it's always better to have two different scanning systems rather than just one. Uh, and so I would run OpenVos along with Nessus whenever possible, especially in my home lab. You should be familiar with both, okay? Um, now Nessus has some conditions along with their free of trial version with the Nessus Essentials. I think you can't hit more than 10 IP addresses, so on and so forth, so you have to be careful about it. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's a decent machine, but this is a basic overview of Nessus. I hope it was informative, and always, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, I don't know what lab I'm going to do next. I think I'm going to do a firewall next, but uh, if you have questions or comments, please leave them below. I will see them, and as always, please like, subscribe, and hit that alert button. We will talk to you later. Have a good one. Thank you.